So, welcome again in my next lecture of uh, the course power electronics application in power system. In the last consecutive two lectures, uh, we have seen that uh, this mathematical modeling of long transmission line model has been developed. Okay. So, the mathematical expression for this voltage and current relationship of the sending end site with receiving end site uh, have been developed. Okay. So, in this lecture we will do similar approach, but in different way. So, in the last lecture I, I set a question uh, at the end of my lecture that we can determine the voltage and current at any point of the line measured from the receiving end site at a distance x. Okay. So, we derive the expression of V x and I x where x is measured from the receiving end site. Right? And accordingly we determine that uh, the relationship of V x and I x with the receiving end parameters. And this is basically used to find out the relationship of sending end and receiving end parameters as well. Now, what would be the expression of this uh, voltage and current at any point of a transmission line which is x distance away from the sending end site. Okay. Whether uh, we can derive the expression for that? In the last uh, lecture, you may find that we derive the expression of the voltage and current at a point which is x uh, distance away from the sending end site. This is derived from the uh, previous derivation. Now, if we use direct approach, uh, direct approach in the sense that we start from the basic Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. Should we uh, come up with the same expression of V x and I x? That is the question I have set. So, this answer I will give you in this lecture. So, in this lecture also we will discuss long transmission line model. So, what we will do is let us consider that this is a single line diagram of a transmission line and this discontinuity set that it is a very long transmission line and we consider that there is a elementary length So, this is the single line diagram of a transmission line. This is single line diagram of a long transmission line and this is the sending end parameters that is voltage and current. I am not giving the direction of the current. Okay. This is the receiving end parameters V r and I r. So, as you know that V s and I s represent sending end voltage and current respectively and V r and I r represent the receiving end site voltage and current respectively. So, this is sending end site. this is receiving end site. And we consider that the length of the line is of L. We consider that the length of the line is small l. Okay. Now, what we consider here is at a x distance away from this sending end site at a x distance away from the sending end site, 
we consider a very small infinitely small length of a section which represent del x and as you know that uh, this 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 rectangular box is representing the sending this uh, series parameter of the line and it is represented by small z multiplied by x uh, del x where small z as you know that it is series parameter per unit length and this two vertical rectangular box boxes represent the uh, admittance uh, of the shunt admittance or shunt parameter per unit length. So, this del x is the very small line section very very or infinitely small line section which is located located at x distance away from the receive uh, from the sending end that is what the difference of this derivation. So, here we consider x measured from the sending end, x is uh, a point which is x distance away from the sending end. In previous derivation, we consider x is measured from the receiving end, that means x is x distance away from the receiving end. Then we will derive this relationship of uh, voltage and current. So, we will consider that voltage at this point is V x current flowing through this infinitely small line is I x. At this side the voltage is V x plus del x and current is I x plus del x. Okay. So, we are considering the direction of the current assuming that a particular polarity of the voltage. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, you know model of this long uh, power transmission line and considering that model we will derive the relationship of V x that is the voltage at this point uh, which is x distance away from the sending end and current flowing through this small elementary length which is x distance away from the sending end. Okay. And uh, this uh, voltage current derivation we will find from the basic principle of electrical engineering that is by applying Karcher's voltage law and Karcher's current law. Now, if we apply K B L over here, so applying K B L the way we did in the last time, what we will get? We will get a relationship of V x and V x plus del x. So, what would be the relationship? So, V x minus this drop that is this I x, this is I x the current flowing through this series parameter multiplied by the series parameter impedance that is z del x. So, I x multiplied by small z del x is equal to V x plus del x. This we derive by uh, applying K B L in this particular loop. right? Now, we get a relationship of V x plus del x minus V x. So, I bring this V x to this side and I will divide this with del x. So, what we will get? We will get minus I of x z. Okay. And since we consider this del x is very very small or infinitely small segment, so del x is tends to 0. So, this is also limit del x tends to 0. So, this gives the derivative of this voltage with respect to this x. So, this gives d v x d x is equal to minus z of 
i of x this is one equation we got ok this is by applying KVL ok similarly by applying KCL at this particular node we get there are three uh, currents one is incoming current that is i of x another is outgoing current that is i of x plus del x another is current flowing through this series shunt admittance which would be y del x multiplied by the voltage at this node that is v x plus del x. So, this is what the application of KCL. So, what we get? We get incoming current that is i of x is equal to sum of these two outgoing current that is out i x plus del x plus y del x multiplied by v x plus del x. Okay. Now, again we will be doing some simplification. So, we will uh, write this i x plus del x minus i of x divided by del of x will be equal to minus minus y multiplied by v x plus del x. Again we consider that del x is infinitely small. So, we can write that del x tends to 0 limit del x tends to 0 both side. So, this side we will get the derivative of this current d i x d x is equal to this side we will get it is equal to y v x. So, this is another equation we get. If this is equation 1, then this is equation 2. Now, what we will do that from equation 1, if we differentiate this equation 1 uh, both the side with respect to x, then what we will get? We will get d 2 v x d x 2 is equal to minus z d i d x. Now, d i d x already the expression we get from equation 2. So, from equation 2 what we can write? This is equal to minus this d i d x is equal to minus y v x. So, this minus minus will be plus. So, this is y z v of x. So, we get the relationship d 2 v x d x 2 is equal minus this y z if you can remember that we considered that y z was gamma square. Okay. So, this is minus gamma square v x is equal to 0. So, this is another equation we get. Now, by solving 3, solving 3, what we get? v x is equal to some arbitrary constant c 1 dash e to the power gamma x plus some arbitrary constant c 2 dash e to the power minus gamma x. Right? So, this is the similar way that we derived in the last time. Now, we get a expression for voltage at the point x which is x distance away from the sending end. Right? Similarly, we will get the expression of the current. So, what would be the expression of current? From this uh, we can find out uh, this i x is equal to uh, minus z uh, or this or alternatively from this also we can find that d i d x is equal to minus y v x. So, what we can do? 
we will simply use this derivation of v x and uh, divide it with minus z. So, what we get is i of x is equal to minus 1 upon z. Now, if we derive it then what we will get? We will get gamma c 1 dash e to the power gamma x plus gamma c 2 dash e to the power minus gamma x. Now, if we bring this gamma outside that will be gamma divided by z c 1 dash e to the power gamma x here there should be negative right because if we derive this uh, if we take the derivative of e to the power minus gamma x. So, this will be minus gamma c 2 dash e to the power minus gamma x. So, this will be minus gamma c 2 dash e to the power minus gamma x. Now, again we, we, we know that this uh, uh, this gamma divided by z it is basically equal to root over. So, gamma I, we can write it as root over y z divided by z square. So, this will be root over y by z. So, this is nothing but 1 upon z c where z c is the characteristic impedance uh, we discussed in the last lecture. Okay. So, this is equal to minus 1 upon z c c 1 dash e to the power gamma x minus c 2 dash e to the power minus gamma x. Okay. Now, we, we also derive the expression of i of x that is the current flowing through this small elementary length of uh, length del x which is located x distance away from the sending end. Right. Now, next what is to be done? Next we have to determine the expression of c 1 dash and c 2 dash and we have to put it in this expression. So, that we will get the complete expression of v of x and i of x. This is done by using boundary uh, conditions. Okay. So, so, let me rewrite these two expression in this page as well. So, we what we get that v of x is equal to c 1 dash e to the power gamma x plus c 2 dash e to the power minus gamma x. And if you look at this expression from this we can write that minus i of x z c is equal to c 1 e to the power c 1 dash e to the power gamma x negative c 2 dash e to the power minus gamma x. Okay. Now, we need to solve these two equations uh, by putting boundary conditions. What is the boundary condition? What is the boundary conditions or what are the boundary conditions we should apply over here? Now, when x is equal to 0, x is equal to 0, then what will be that v of x? v of x will be v of s. If you look back to the circuit, when x is measured from the sending end side. So, when x is equal to 0, so v x will represent this v s and similarly i x will represent this i s. So, we will put this two boundary condition over here. So, i of x will be equal to i s. So, if you put this into this expression then what we will get? So, v of x will be equal to v s that is c 1 dash plus c 2 dash and this will be i of s z c c 1 dash minus c 2 dash. Now, we will have two unknowns that is c 1 dash and c 2 dash. These are we consider two arbitrary constants and we have two equations. So, we can get their uh, expression directly. So, what we will get if you add these two? So, we will get c 1 dash is equal to v s minus i s z c divided by 2 and if we subtract these two then we will get c 2 dash which is equal to v s plus i s z c divided by 2. 
Now we get this C1 dash and C2 dash we will put over here, so that we get the relationship of Vx and Ix. So, if we put this over here what value of Vx we will get? So, Vx we will get as Vs minus Is Zc divided by 2 e to the power gamma x plus V s plus I s Z c divided by 2 e to the power minus gamma x. Now, we, we will separate V s and uh, I s. So, what we will get? V s is equal to V s multiplied by e to the power gamma x plus e to the power minus gamma x divided by 2 right minus is z c e to the power gamma x minus e to the power minus gamma x divided by 2. So, this we get from this expression right. So, this e to the power gamma x plus e to the power minus gamma x by 2 you can write it as a cosine hyperbolic gamma x and this we can write as, as a sin hyperbolic gamma x. So, this is the relationship of V of x which we determine from this derivation right. So, if you look at this expression, this ex expression is exactly identical to what we get in the last lecture ok. In the last lecture instead of deriving this uh, directly, so this this whatever I discussed today is the direct method or direct approach to derive this uh, expression of V x and I x uh, where x is measured from the sending end side ok. So, in the last lecture I discussed the same. Uh, but we did not derive it directly, rather we derived from the interpretation of uh, the relationship of V s and V r and I s and I r ok. So, this is uh, exactly matching. So, if I uh, just consider for lossless line, if we take the assumption for lossless line, we know for the lossless lines this z c will become root over l by c, where l is the line inductance per unit length capacit uh, c is the line capacitance per unit length and this gamma will be, be will become j beta ok. So, if I put over here then what we will get? We will get v of x is equal to v s cos beta x minus this will be I s j z c sin beta x. This is the same expression we derived in the last lecture. In that way also one can determine the expression of I of x as a function of V s and I s ok. So, that is uh, that you can find out by if you just put this C 1 dash and C 2 dash in this particular expression you will get I of x also which I am not doing over here. So, you can anybody can derive this. Now, if you look at this expression, this expression is di exactly identical what we derived in the last lecture right. So, the way we derived in the last lecture that is exactly matching over here. Now, if we consider the another boundary condition that at x is equal to L where L is the line length, you can look at this x, when x is equal to L, so L will be the line length. So, then V x will be equal to V r, I x will be equal to I r. So, we can write that for x is equal to L, V x will be equal to V r ok. So, if you put it in this expression, then what we will get? We will get V r is equal to V s cos beta L minus I s J z c sin beta 
uh, it should be sin beta because I am just uh, considering at x is equal to L. So, this will be sin beta L. So, that is the relationship we derive in the last lecture by inverting this matrix A B C D matrix and multiplying with this column uh, uh, vector of V S I S uh, and we, we arrive at that and from this expression we guess this, but uh, our guess is correct which can be shown uh, or which can be proved over this direct analysis as well. So, that is what the idea behind uh, today's derivation all right and we can find the relationship of here in terms of V S I S. So, we have now two relationships one is the expression of V R and I R as a function of V S and I S which we derived uh, right now and we also have the expression of V S and I S as a function of V R and I R which we derived in the last lecture. So, both the uh, expression will be useful in particular derivation of this power flow of the transmission line and both expression would be used in several times uh, when I will discuss this uh, line long transmission line compensation in future lecture. Okay. So, for this today's lecture is up to this. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.